Like, who die rolls towards bullets? <laughs> Chow Yun Fat, that's who. <laughs> Welcome back to the Ethan on Action. I'm your host, as always, Ethan Bao. I'm joined here by Peter. And today we're going to review a classic, Hard Boiled. Directed by The Wu. Cinematography by Wing Hang Hong. Stunt coordinators are Jackie Yung, Bruce Law, and Philip Kwok. First scene we're going to break down and look at is the Tea House Shootout. Jang Young Fat plays Royal Hong Kong Police Inspector Tequila. <laughs> Along with his partner Benny, they try to arrest a group of gun smugglers. Things do not go as planned, and all hell breaks loose. Damn, this is... This is... The beginning of the movie? <laughs> like, holy shit, we're, we're in for a ride. It's from like here. the finale of most movies. I know, days. this is the finale of most movies. So, yeah, I just kind of want to touch on the kind of the, the energy of the scene, like the kinetic energy. Like, everything is in constant motion. Like, I don't know, almost like a stage play, like a well choreographed stage play in a way. You mean it's called art? Yeah. It was art. art. Fucking art. Art. <laughs> Every dive roll. Like, who dive rolls towards bullets? <laughs> Chow Yun Fat, that's who. <laughs> like, it's not realistic at all, but no. it's cool. It's no. pulpy. It's, it's got yeah, that it's... John Wick vibe where you believe it. And what's with all the little uh, square pieces of paper flying around all the time? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> you got to have debris. Like, literally. What, what sticks in the air longer than anything else? <laughs> Every time something gets blown up, it's just like paper. <laughs> How did you feel about this scene? Like, as you were just watching, like, what, 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 what was going through your mind? Infinite bullets. <laughs> yes. Infinite ammo. They got that cheat code going on. Like, all those cliche 80s, 90s action thing with Stallone where they're, like, so tough. Yeah. It, uh, it, it's basically the Hong Kong version of that. Yeah. Like, Chow Yun Fat, like, front kicks his partner who got shot. Yeah. Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> what, one of the things that I, I kind of really loved was... Going into the the final sequence where it's that one on one battle. Apparently, the kind of the when Chow Yun Flat, uh, Chow Yun Fat, Flat, <laughs> Chow Yun Flat, he ain't flat, <laughs> Chow Yun Fat, P H A T. No, uh, he dives over that table and like gets covered in that flower. Apparently, that was actually his idea. That's that's something he kind of improvised. It bursts out visually when you oh, look yeah. at it. It's like oh, he's like a an avenging ghost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, what I that, got. That blood splatter? Oh, man. It, it has that... It doubles or triples or quadruples the effect that you get from that blood splatter, right? What about the uh, banister oh, thing? Oh, my God. The Max Payne movie? It's pretty iconic. Like, that's... That's something that video game programmers have, like, tried to recreate, almost, in a way. Have you played Stranglehold? Yes. Which is a an actual direct sequel. Of yes, this. I have played yeah. it. I, I wish I could have played that, but... Classic. Was it good? Was it good? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Had that Max Payne kind of stuff. Or? It was a post Max Payne Max Payne world, so it was hard to match that, right? Yeah. yeah. So it was good. I enjoyed yeah. it. So what'd you give it out of five? I gave it a four. Oh, four. I'm going with a full five on this. I thought it was an amazing opening, so Yeah. I, I think the only thing that I kept it from a five for me was that um there wasn't emotional stakes as the later scenes would have. Okay, so yeah. that's why I gave it. That's a true. Like I didn't even know who his what his partner's name was until Benny. he told me Benny. <laughs> his partner that he front kicks like a shot. <laughs> out of the way! Get out of the way! Next scene we got up is the tequila attack. Tony Leung Chi Wai plays undercover cop Allen. Allen is forced to murder his former crime boss, and he cries about it. <laughs> Tequila then swings down and attacks everyone. <laughs> he cries about it. <laughs> Best Asian crier in movies ever. He nailed the scene. That that specific part, I was like, I felt it, bro. <laughs> I felt this it. scene was very similar to Infernal Affairs when mm-hmm. Inspector Wong died in front of him. Mm-hmm. The song kicks on. Yeah. It, does he have the best high eyes in Hong Kong? As an actor, like he's so good at acting with his eyes, Tony Leung. He's he's good at he's, oh, fuck. But those he's good eyes, at though. Yeah, they, those eyes. They those say eyes. so much. They're always like yeah. confused. Yeah, 
Like those aren't Asian eyes. Those those are wide eyes. Those are like European <laughs> <I know. laughs> Russian eyes. <laughs> you sure he's not mixed? <laughs> he may be. I don't know. Chi That sounds Chi-wai. you know Norwegian or something. <laughs> well, he's playing the Mandarin in Shang Chi. Oh man, I can't wait for that. Simolo, Similu. I hope they make him taller. <laughs> anyway, uh, so <laughs> back to the scene. All right. So I just want to say, Mad Dog, his this is his kind of intro scene to the movie. And uh, it, it's a pretty badass, interesting, you know, sliding in with that uh, that um, kind of motorbike, motorcycle, whatever he's riding, and then, like, blasting off that whole room of guys. And that, that face, I don't know, it's just, it's so menacing and, like, intimidating. Whenever I saw Mad Dog, I'm like, he's always that scary Asian uncle you have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> who, who do, he doesn't say anything, and he just chain smokes at parties. Yeah. And, like, just... <laughs> Kicks back Hennessy's like over and over and over again. Just yeah. says one word. Duk. Uh, <laughs> yes. <bye. laughs> I'm proud of you. Uh, oh my God. That is the greatest honor of all time. <laughs> <laughs> so what was Tequila's plan? Just kill everybody? <sighs> one man army? Like he's going full commando here and like, you know, he throws two smoke bombs, which, okay. All right. You know, you might blind guy, but. You're swinging on a rope, which is making you a pretty easy target. So you do realize this is a movie where people die roll in front of bullets, right? Yes, I, I realized that, but this stood out to me. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely a lot of like uh, woo moments. Yeah, like the anytime Tony uh, Tony Lung is like in a car, like dodging bullets or whatever, and um, Tequila is shooting his shotgun into those cars, then the cars, the yeah. inside is just like. And you go, whoa! Yeah, it's just exploding right around him. Or another part where Tequila shoots a guy next to Alan, and, yeah. then, and that guy falls while yeah. Alan's dive ro- or jumping sideways and shooting. Yeah, and they both fall, land at the same time. You're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So many oh moments. <laughs> or the motorcycle. Oh yeah, yeah. Like Tequila jumping over that the, the one motorcycle. He shotguns first, sliding. It's burning. Jumps over, shotguns another guy, the motorcycle explodes. Like, I mean, that would require a lot of reaction time if you think mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's like a millisecond. Yeah. From a technical level, like, what they had to do to kind of set up, like, how do you do all these kind of, like, like pyrotechnics? And, like, I know Hollywood stunt, or not Hollywood, Hong Kong stunt guys are like, don't give a fuck, and, you know, they'll, they'll do whatever, but... It feels like you're putting so many guys in danger with the shit that's like going off right around their face and heads and ears and everything like that. Out of five, how do you want to give this? Oh, I'm giving this another five. Like, I love the scene as well. Just, it was like a bullet ballet, which I think a lot of people have always described. Bullet John ballet, Woo, yeah, gun bullet fu, ballet, gun fu. bloodshed. Yeah, he, he's the he's the father of gunfu, basically. <laughs> if Bruce Lee is the father of MMA, as some people say, this is what. John Wick, uh, John Wick took inspiration from, kind of, in a way, in certain ways. A little bit, but John Wick's completely different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they use it a little bit. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> it's so different. But if I were to rate this on just the action alone, I'd say to four. But because because uh, Alan cries, that emotional impact. I know. Gives it a five. It. I like Uncle Hoy. That dude was respectable. He's man. like the. He's like, spare he's always my men, uncle. just kill me. He's always the good uncle in every Hong Kong movie. In every movie, he's like, spare my men. <laughs> the good uncle. <laughs> the good uncle. Do you have a good uncle? I don't know. I, have, I don't think I have an uncle that would do that for me. <laughs> Next up, we got Tequila and Alan versus Mad Dog. The setup. Tequila and Alan team up. They track down a hidden armory vault hidden within the hospital. Waiting for them inside is Mad Dog. <laughs> What's with that pose? <laughs> I mean, pause. <laughs> I got total boss fight vibes. Yeah, okay. I'm going to say it right now. I feel like the originators of boss fights in cinema is James Cameron and John Woo. And I feel like every Can video game, okay. every video game always tries to look at those scenes in these movies by these directors and yeah. try to like recreate that yeah. feel. Like this movie really takes on the third person shooter. Also this scene though, it, it was it's really the only scene where you kind of see like that hand to hand combat a little bit, right? Uh, and you see how much more powerful Mad Dog is than everyone that's around him. Uh, but I 
Uh, yeah. yeah, they basically said that these two can't take him on no. head on. No. But I do have to say, John Woo's directing style of fashion mm-hmm. doesn't apply well to hand to hand, in my opinion. You don't think so? It's still good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I still think it works for this movie. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that whole, they do a move and it slows down. <laughs> I feel like it applies a lot better for his shootouts. Okay. Not so much hand to hand. No, I you, get that. Yeah, you know why? He, he's always done so. You know well why? With the shooters, you know right? why I say that? Why? Last fight in Mission Impossible Two. <laughs> it's the same style. Yeah, it's the exact same style. Uh, that's that's pretty. That's pretty bad. I gave the scene a three. Three? Yeah, I gave it a three as well. Yeah. Next up, we have the hospital finale. The setup. Crime Lord Wong takes over the hospital, and everyone in it as hostages. Can Tequila, Allen, and the Hong Kong police force save the day? <laughs> question mark? That is the question. <laughs> Man, I gotta say, this is epic. This is so fucking epic. It's like a 40-minute sequence, and there's so many, like, kind of, it like, branches off into, like, little side stories and everything. There's so many stakes here. The patients, the doctors, the nurses, the babies, the yeah. kids. Yeah, choosing the hospital as the setting for the finale was... An inspired choice. It's frightening. Yeah. Because absolutely. Even though we know this is over the top, but still, there's innocence there mm-hmm. while they're dive rolling in front of bullets. Yeah, like, shooting like at fuck each other. those tea house people, but like, I care about more <laughs> about the, the innocent people at the hospital. <laughs> and plus, Alan's shot like three or four times by this point. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's pretty fucked up. <laughs> he's pretty fucked up. Like, we didn't talk about this scene, but the bow part where he gets a shotgun to the spine. Yeah. <laughs> like, into his kidneys. <laughs> You can't piss, man. <laughs> you can't do anything without your kidneys. Even during the wonder, like he shot during that wonder, and Tequila's like, suck it up! <laughs> you still good? Yeah! All right! <laughs> <laughs> Move on! Let's talk about that wonder. What did you read on the internet about oh, this man. that makes it true? Uh, so many. So, so I got kind of conflicting reports. So one was about like how... With their schedule and everything, they only had like kind of one day or one chance to kind of shoot it all in one take. Uh, but then I also read another thing where they it's actually kind of two takes that they were able to do, and then they kind of spliced it together seamlessly. Like if they did, were if they were able to pull that off, it was pretty seamless. So do you know where? You know where it occurs? No, I don't know. No, I, no, no. I I don't know I'm where it occurs. No, me. no. <laughs> No, I really do not know where it would have occurred, but um, I do know. Really cool. The one, the part where uh, Tequila and Alan get into that elevator and they're having a little talk. Obviously, it, it's not an actual elevator, so it's just the crew switching the sets behind them, and they only have twenty seconds to switch everything, make sure it's all clean, uh, almost like set up the special effects again because they they went through that same hallway that they just shot through, and now they got to make it look completely clean i was looking at the floors i'm like is there anything left no they swept everything <laughs> they swept everything <laughs> not even like a like a little like bullet fragment or anything at all That's nuts yeah, it's crazy how they they're just the technical level that they were able to pull this off with the special effects the the timing of everything you have to because there's so much like explosions squibs everything that's going off i can't imagine the technical aspect it's it's mind-blowing really now, did you read about how John Woo is a bit hard to work on in this movie? Yeah. Yeah. Expand. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the explosion scene with uh, yes. Chang and Fat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So from what I read, uh, apparently it, it was supposed to blow up. Like the scene where he's running down the hallway with the baby is to blow up at a certain time to give him time to run. But John Woo <laughs> grabbed the trigger <laughs> And he basically blew it faster, <laughs> like, before he even ran. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, like, he was literally running for his life at that point. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. and uh, once Wu saw the back of Chow Yun fats head. Like, oh, and, sorry. Uh, and coat. Bernie's like, oh, shit, sorry. And did you hear what Chow Yun fat said? Yeah, he's like, ah, did it look good? <laughs> yeah, so his exact quote was like, you happy now, motherfucker? How'd it look? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What a badass. That's such a Chow Yun Fat thing to say. <sighs> I fucking love Chow Yun Fat. <laughs> and uh, all these other changes. Apparently, Alan's character was completely different. He was supposed to be like a serial killer or like a cold-blooded killer. Then Chow Yun Fat was Oh, really? Like, I didn't yeah, hear that one. Totally different. I, like, I, 
heard they shot two different endings where Alan gets killed. Yes. And then, you know, yeah. survives or whatever, but, which but, um, happens in the movie. But, but before, but they actually took like a two-month break mm-hmm. because of script stuff. Because mm-hmm. Alan was supposed to be this like bad villain guy, killer guy, right? And um, Xiao Yun Fat's like, I don't think he should do that for his no. character. <laughs> no, it makes... Yeah. No, it, it fits perfectly with how they actually ended up filming the movie with Alan in that undercover dual role kind of, right? Yeah, I don't know what was going on with Wu at the time, but he was really angry during that period <laughs> from what I heard. Was he going through a divorce or something? <laughs> uh, well, from what I read, um, this is post-movie, so I don't know about pre-movie. Okay. But um, first off, this movie did well in Hong Kong, yeah. but not as well as, as his other movies because mm-hmm. it was a time where the, the audiences were moving away from those gritty dramas. Mm-hmm. They were moving towards Stephen Chow movies. Yeah, the, more to the comedy side, right? Yeah. 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 So I gotta say, um, my favorite sequence, probably in the whole entire movie, is the just anything to do with um, Tequila and Alan versus Mad Dog. That's like the next. That's like Mad Dog boss fight level two. Yeah, yeah. So because the scene is so epic, we basically combined our rankings with this scene. So top three badass moves and moments uh, of this scene. Uh, so for this sequence, uh, number three, I have actually. Little small moment, but it it's the initial guy that's going out the window with the kid that's holding the uh like an infant baby. Uh he gets shot up and he's like pretty still high up there, so he's holding on to the baby. He's like dying basically, but he's holding on with like the last breath that he has, right? Kind of a badass moment for that unnamed guy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Number three, I got Alan and Tequila. Sliding on these plates right out of the morgue while shooting. Oh, yeah. Where do they get the momentum? It's that speed. You just got to dive, man. You like, got to go for it. I get tequila getting that speed because Alan probably shoved him. But how did Alan get that speed? You got to run. He's got like that, like, you know, 10 meter. <laughs> just dive through. Yeah. I actually had that as my number two. <laughs> that's your number two? Yeah, that's my oh, number wow. two. Especially because, like, tequila dives out and then he lands on that gurney. And then he, like, kind of spears that one guy and then, like, shoots him against the wall. Just that kind of ending part of it as well. Physics! <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but... Uh, Physics okay, isn't cool. real! <laughs> Number two, I have... During the Alan and Alan and Tequila versus Mad Dog. Yep. Alan dives sideways through a door and gets shot at Tequila. Mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And then... Tequila <laughs> dives sideways through the glass, shoots a mad dog, <laughs> and then mad dog dives through another glass. <laughs> it's like three dives. You <laughs> always gotta dive, bro. <laughs> so my number one also actually has a little bit of a dive. So it's actually kind of the so it's during the um, uh, mad dog versus Allen one on one. They're running through that hall, face-off style, shooting with the wall between them. And then Mad Dog dives through the window and continues shooting to, to Alan, who's kind of run off screen at this point. But it, like, it was just so badass. Just the way it was framed, the way it was shot. Well, they were shooting at each other through the glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They That's were shooting at each cool. other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry if I didn't mention that. Imagine you were the guy in charge of exploding the glass and you're off. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, we got to do that again for the 59th time. Wu would <laughs> kick your ass. Harder. Number one, you're not expecting this. Oh? But I chose it because there was a lot of meaning behind this part. Oh. Teresa, when she shoots the guy, uh... the guy slaps her. He's like, bitch! <laughs> So the reason why I chose this scene is because during that era in Hong Kong, yeah. police women were not allowed to carry guns. Mm. And I read reports when this scene happened, people in Hong Kong in the movie theater stood up and cheered. Oh, yeah? Because there was actually a big moment for women's rights Finally. in Hong Kong. <laughs> Next up, we got Rate, our hero. All right. Rate Tequila. Tequila. He's an obvious five. I gave him a 2.5. You didn't like him? No, I liked him. I just don't think he was that good of a character, though. Okay. 
I didn't really understand his motivations <laughs> at all. He's just guy that wants to bang Teresa. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> guy that's dating Teresa. <laughs> guy that's dating Teresa and wants to do the right thing. Like, did you watch the uh, the full like sub version or full sub? Okay, so, okay. Yeah. So, how accurate do you think those subs are though? Because apparently they they kind of messed up the those. Well, it's not entirely right? his fault, right? I mean. As you know, Hong Kong movies are shot without a script. Yeah. So he probably doesn't even know what the character he is, is. He is pretty thinly he's, written, but... Yeah, he's yeah, winging I'm, I'm judging it more on the ac- action perspective yeah. than you're looking at the overall movie. Just overall narrative, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not that great of a character. He's yeah. cool, because Chang and Fat's cool. Yeah. But if you compare that to the Hitman and Killer, that guy is way above this one. <laughs> Hitman and Killer. Killer. He was, that was a fully formed, well-written character. Okay. Killer. Okay. All right, next up, we got Radar Villain. We never mentioned him. Wong! Anthony Wong! Johnny yeah. Wong! He's Wong, the same last name. Played by Anthony Wong. <laughs> what do you got for him? Uh, I give him a three. I gave, I, I was going to give him a two, but then he got an extra point for killing Mad Dog, which is, um, spoiler, my favorite character. So, yeah. After, at that point, I was like, this fucker needs to die! <laughs> he was actually the ones complaining about Wu. With his portrayal, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? You mean he, he was like complaining about like he didn't like the way his character is written or that the, the more of the directing style? What, what I think mean? both. He just didn't like working with Wu. Oh, really? He just okay. said John Wu was really difficult to work with. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. But like I said, John Wu was probably like super angry at that point for whatever <laughs> reason. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Call him. <laughs> He's tired of Hong Kong. I Call know. him. I actually gave him a four. Gave him four? Okay. Because knowing that he was like thinly written, he didn't have much to work with, but he kind of like yeah. played it up like over the top guy. <laughs> and plus, um, he's so threatening. Took over an entire hospital. It just fucking shot up like innocent bystanders. Don't oh man, give that part. A fuck. That part, I felt it. <laughs> okay. Next question I have. And it's a serious one. Has the action aged well? Oh yeah. I feel it has. So this question kind of has like a two-parter almost. Okay. It's like, has it aged well in terms of watching it now from back then? Yeah. Yes, for me. Yeah. Second part of that question. Has it aged well in terms of if this style was made last week, would it be great? I think it would. I think it would pull it off because it's so different from what is out right now. Manhunt? You love Manhunt? Manhunt? What are you talking about? John Woo's Manhunt? I have not seen that. So. You have seen it. You have seen it. Parts okay. Parts of it, right? The that's the like what the Japanese. Yeah. yeah, you've seen it. It's the okay. exact same action. Uh, it is I, the same action. I can see what you're saying, like exact same action. The way it, you know, whatever. But it's not the exact same action. It is the same action. Uh, it doesn't evoke the same emotion for me. That's because of script writing, character, yada yada yada. I'm yeah. saying that style of action. If it came out last week, would it be good? Well, now that you've said the whole manhunting, so I guess if you put a little character in it, if you put the right leading actor and the, the right leading secondary characters, secondary actors, villains, anything like that. So, it, yeah, it, everything needs to, like, mix up well in that bowl in order for it to, to pull off. So it goes with any kind of movie. Like, you now, nowadays, I feel like you need to make a quality movie overall. What about you, Gemini Man? That action was pretty good. Yeah, no one thinks about it. No one cares about it. But the action was pretty good, though. <laughs> yeah, action's pretty good, but no one exactly. talks about it. That's what I'm talking about. But no one talks about it, though. But that's what I'm talking about. That style of action, if it came out last week, would you be like, whoa, I, that was cool? Yeah, I would say that, yeah. You didn't say that about Manhunt. It's because I can't even remember Manhunt. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. It wasn't that cool. Because in my mind, Manhunt does not equal, like, you, you may say it in your mind, Manhunt is that type of action. In my mind, it's not in that type of action that you're talking but about. But it is. If you watch a scene from Manhunt, the shootout scenes, yeah. it's just like the killer and Hard Boil. I don't, I don't feel that way. So. <laughs> it really is. It's I the exact same way. style. <laughs> so on that point, I'd say the action has not aged well. I don't think if you made a style of this action now, like let's say that this style of action came out next week, I don't think it aged well. Because in a post, again, post-raid, post-John Wick world, that's a bit of a regression. Either way, this is, for me, one of my favorite action movies of all time. So 
Look, I'm not saying it's a bad action. I'm saying it's still one of my favorite action movies of all time. It's like number two or three. Yeah. All I'm saying is that style of action doesn't fit in today's world. Hmm. But Cowboy Bebop, the anime, you never watched the anime, right? No. So that action is basically the killer in Hard Boiled and Manhunt and Mission Impossible 2. And the Netflix show is coming out. So who knows? Maybe they'll bring it back. Maybe hmm. they'll make it cool again. Is Keanu still attached to it? He was never attached to it. He wasn't? Keanu? For Cowboy Bebop? What are you oh, talking about? Oh, maybe I'm like talking about like... What are you smoking? Reading like some fantasy, <laughs> <laughs> fantasy cast. John Cho. Yeah, John Cho. Yes. Remember okay. he hurt his okay. knee? Yeah, yeah. And then they had to take yes, nine months John off? Yes, John Cho. I love John Cho. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe, maybe they'll bring that style of action back. Perhaps. That'd be nice. Okay, that does it for this episode. Thanks for listening. Right, right. We are out. Bye. Music for the eighth and an action to spend my Mason tickle. If you like what you heard, please rate, review, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, leave a like. Bye for now. See you.